Welcome to Conversation With. This is an in-depth program on BCAT where I ask one guest to sit down and talk about some issues related to them personally and to the group of people maybe they represent. Today we are talking with Jeremy Sullivan. Jeremy is the chairman of the Port Gamble Sklalem Tribe and we are at the, their government headquarters on Little Boston Road overlooking Port Gamble Bay. This is really a very, very beautiful setting. Jeremy has lived on the tribe, tribe's reservation most of his life and by heritage and experience is uniquely aware of the various issues facing the Sklalem people today. With this in mind, he has helped lead a campaign to protect and preserve one of the tribe's most precious natural resources, Port Gamble Bay. This has included speaking out against projects including the North Kitsap Legacy Project, partnership, excuse me, the North Kitsap Legacy Partnership that has the potential to jeopardize the Bay's health and with it, the Port Gamble Sklalem Tribe's way of life. And with that, welcome Jeremy. Thank you. Um, Jeremy's first of all gonna give us a little bit of history, but Jeremy, I wanted to tell you what a beautiful, day. I'm sure you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. We had a beautiful drive up here and um, the tribe's reservation overlooks some beautiful, beautiful water as well as the mountains. And give us a history of the Port Gamble Sklalem tribe. Well, the Port Gamble Sklalem tribe has lived in, in these waters um, for at least 2,000 years that we can prove so we've had we've had some history with the Salish Sea and and uh, the Puget Sound and and the Hood Canal for that matter, and we've lived here at this Port Gamble site um, was one of our villages, ancestral villages, right where the the general store is in Port Gamble. Is the tribe where, did live there. We had a, a a rather large what we call a smokehouse, similar to a longhouse, mm -hmm. um, in that site. And um, it was that village had surrounding village was called Tikalet, and the Tikalet village um, is recognized somewhat over there in Port Gamble with with the Tikalet Road. There used to be the Tikalet Hotel, and that was uh, due to the Sklalem presence that was was over there. And uh, we had a seasonal village in Port Gamble Bay that we harvested finfish, shellfish. Um, we harvested berries and we hunted uh, uh, throughout the region. The Kalalam people, I say Sklalem and Kalalam because there's been, historically we've, um, we've been called Kalalam and Kalalam and uh, we currently are the Port Gamble Kalalam tribe and uh, we've been, our people have been from here where we currently are in Port Gamble Bay all the way out to the Straits of Juan de Fuca, down towards Oregon, all the way up through British Columbia, and everywhere in between we've had many villages, um, at least 15 that we can recognize today. And um, they are of strong importance to this tribe. And uh, we, we look to preserve as many as possible. Now the Sklalem people take different roles in preserving what, what they feel is important. The Port Gamble Sklalem tribe has taken a strong importance of protecting this bay for mm -hmm. many, many years. And we've done that with the support of other tribes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Jeremy, how many people are in the tribe? We currently have just under 1,300 members, Sklalem members. Um, we, we have about 400 homes on reservation. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, our membership is, is strong, it's getting stronger mm -hmm. and uh, we're very proud of our people and, and, and what they can do. What's the um, acreage, what's the land in the tri um, your reservation here on Little Boston Road? Oh, I want to say it's 1,400 acres. I can't remember exactly how many mm -hmm. acres there are, but mm -hmm. I think it's around 1,400 acres. What's the significance of Little Boston? Well, there's, you know, we talk about Sklalem people, Native Americans in general, you talk about oral history and uh, oral history that I've learned about the term Little Boston is, is twofold. One of them is um, when settlers came in via, via ships, they would look on these, these lands and it reminded them of 
Boston, Massachusetts, oh, okay. and they would say, this looks like a little Boston, and, and that's one of the oral histories. Another one is from the Skalalem side, um, a lot of our, our members, even only two generations before me, my dad's parents used to call non-natives uh, Bostoners. So that's what, that's what we called uh, huh. people that were living in Port Gamble were Bostoners. So, I, so it probably stretched over to our side of the, of mm -hmm. the bay to be called Little Boston. Um, but that's, you know, we've, we've had many people in our history called the non-natives Bostoners. So. Mm -hmm. It's, Interesting. Yeah, it's pretty funny. So, so we've talked about the historical and um, cultural significance being um, the harvesting of sh uh, shellfish and finfish. Are there other cultural significance um, related to the bay? Absolutely. Um, well, one, we, we certainly lived here and, and we've been here for since time immemorial. And, and we've been able to harvest not only finfish and shellfish, but we've, it was in such abundance years ago. And, and it, we harvest berries and cedar. We made mm -hmm. canoes. We, we traveled these waters on our canoes um, to the different villages. We traded furs, we traded shellfish. We, we, you know, we've been here, this is a lifestyle. This is what we've been through time since we've been here. And um, preserving that is, has been difficult, um, especially when the non was 150 years ago, um, it was both an opportunity and it was a deficit to this tribe. Because mm -hmm. um, we, we did lose a lot, you know, when the, the non-natives came, they did force our young people to, to go to boarding schools. And we, we were forced to move away from speaking our language, singing our songs, practicing our, our, what would, our born rights. And uh, they were taken from us. And that's what we're doing right now is a cultural significance. We want to preserve the bay. We want to preserve as many waters as we can help, help with um, for our children and to gain our, our rights back. Mm -hmm. We're learning our language. We're learning our songs. We're, we're recreating ways in which we harvested many, many years ago. And um, it's nothing but positive for our culture significance. And we want to keep doing that. We want to do that for the rest of time. Mm -hmm. So those are the cultural reasons why I would say that it's very important for us to preserve this bay. Mm -hmm. How is the tribe using the bay today? The tribe uses the bay um, I would say a majority of our tribal membership uses it for subsistence. Um, subsistence for tribal members here on this reservation is, is quite different from um, subsistence that a non-native would um, call subsistence. I've been subsistence harvesting with some of my friends that are non-natives. I've went and got my state license to go harvest salmon and, and um, crab and just to be with them you know, because in order for, there's laws that say, state, if I'm going to go out in the boat with a non-native, then I have to be licensed through the state. Okay. Um, so I've, I've been through that, and, and it's quite different. For the Sklallam people, we, we do a lot of our harvesting out of necessity. Um, a lot of times our tribal members could be going through a rough patch, mm -hmm. uh, could be between jobs. A lot of our jobs are seasonal. Um, so... You know, they look in the cupboard, they look in their fridge, and there's not a lot to eat in there. And so what better way to um, sustain yourself than to go down to the bay and harvest some oysters, harvest some clams, and bring them home and eat them. Mm -hmm. um, not only is it really good, but it's an opportunity that our tribal membership can take. When I went out with uh, the non-tribal members, you know, they put a lot of money into their boat, they put a lot of money in the gas, they put a lot of money in the license, they go out there and harvest, you know, two crab, and and it seems like it's certainly not out of necessity. And mm -hmm. um, for our membership, it truly is, even to this date, a an issue of necessity. When I was growing up as a kid, um, we ate a lot of duck, we ate a lot of deer, we ate a lot of elk, salmon, crab, clams, oysters. Um, and I didn't even realize it was because my parents didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I just thought that's what we ate. 
because mm -hmm. it was an opportunity for us to do so. Mm -hmm. As I grow up, I realize that um, it, a lot of it was because we had to go harvest those things. And we ate so much duck, I don't think I'll ever willingly go eat a duck again. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, uh, it was something that we grew up doing. Uh -huh. and, uh, and we still have people today that, that rely on, on harvesting in our bay mm -hmm. um, to, to make it through the week. Mm -hmm. so. What effect did the uh, Pope and Tab Talbot sawmill, which operated at Port Gamble for about 150 years, mm -hmm. what did it have, what effect did it have on the ecosystem of the bay? Well, currently we can use science to tell us what kind of toxins are currently um, measurable in the bay. And we, we've pushed, the Port Gamble Sklom tribe has pushed for baywide studies. We've done our own baywide studies to show that there are toxic levels, there are carcinogens in these waters. And we've made our tribal membership aware of them. Um, so they're, they're, the ecosystem has been affected not only by the fin fish and shellfish being affected by what they eat in the bay, but we've also lost species. We've lost link cod in the bay. We've lost a lot of, um, of eelgrass that grew uh, in abundance in the bay, and, and we've lost a lot of those. Um, a lot of our shellfish, if, if it's not toxic, they don't look very good. Like we wouldn't eat them because they just don't look right mm -hmm. in certain aspects of the bay. There are shellfish closure zones right now mm -hmm. um, in the bay adjacent to the mill site and on the other side of Port Gamble on the outside of the bay towards the Hood Canal Bridge. And those are drastically affecting what we do with um, with our cultural and our and our um, preservation for our, our people, mm -hmm. so the ecosystem has been affected in many ways, and and we will not know the true effects until there's a cleanup plan that's been approved by all parties involved, which is the state government, the federal government, Olympic Property Group and Port Gamble Sklalom tribe and the other surrounding tribes that have used these waters, mm -hmm. Skokomish, Jamestown, Lower Elwha, and Suquamish use these waters. And we all have a vested interest in making sure that the cleanup goes right. Mm -hmm. And once the cleanup process is approved and implemented, and then it'll take another 20 years to see where we're at. The studies that show is the cleanup process working right. and things like that. Um, we're very hopeful that we do this right. We mm -hmm. do the planning portion of it right. Feasibility study is due at the end of uh, February, so we hopefully have um, a plan and a feasibility study done at the end of the next of uh, the end of this month, and uh, and then we'll know more about where where the cleanup process is mm -hmm. going, and 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 hopefully we we can all prove it and and move forward with cleaning up the bay. Who's doing the feasibility study? Um, is it the Department the of Ecology. The Department of Ecology, excellent. But they use um, what is called the Port Gamble Bay Dialogue Group. Excellent. And those are the liable parties Got that I had mentioned before. And uh, we certainly send representation to the dialogue mm -hmm. group. So mm -hmm. um, it's very important to us and, and uh, we are pushing certain aspects of the feasibility study to include human health issues that are currently not in the feasibility study. Um, but we want to require that because our people rely on the shellfish in this bay. And if we don't know the human health risks, then um, we won't have all the information. We won't know exactly. what, what the outcomes really are measured by if we don't mm -hmm. ask for them up front. Mm -hmm. so. so with that thought, we're going to take a break. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, the North Kitsap Legacy Partnership and the concept of a fully contained community and the tribe stand on both of those projects. So stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Conversation With. I'm joined today with Jer by Jeremy Sullivan, who is the chairman of the Port Gamble Sklalem Tribe. 
Uh, Jeremy, you've been tribal chairman since 2010. However, you've served on council for how long? Six years. Um, and I was actually elected chair in 2000, July of 2009. Oh. So my term ends July of this year. Actually, I have to mm -hmm. um, rerun in July of It's a voting process then. Every two years. The tribe votes in the chairperson. Exactly. 18 years and older, you can vote if you're a Sklallam tribe member. Mm -hmm. So... Wow. Well, you're doing some really nice work. Jeremy has given us the background and history of the Port Gamble Sklalem tribe and um, told us about the importance of the Port Gamble Bay that we're talking about. What we want to get into now is um, the North Kitsap Legacy Partnership and why do the Sklalem and Suquamish oppose it? Tell us about the partnership and what it all means. Okay. Um, we were approached by Commissioner Bauer about a year or so ago, a little bit more than a year ago, um, talking about preservation of open space and what a great opportunity is for the Port Gamble School Island tribe um, because a lot of the open space is kind of surrounding uh, the, the reservation here. And we agreed, we, we wholeheartedly agree with open space and preservation of open space and however we can get in some kind of trust is of the utmost importance to the Sklallam people. Um, we just wanted to know what the details were. We wanted to know how you could do that. And uh, when the details came out about what, where they want to transfer density from this open space to Port Gamble town, it really caused some worry. But we still didn't know what the details were. We just had concerns about um, the environment of the bay. That's been our first concern. That's always been what we've talked about. Um, in every meeting, our message has been consistent. Um, so we don't necessarily oppose the North Kitsap Legacy Partnership. We would prefer to be an ally if the partnership were to look at options outside of transferring density to Port Gamble. Mm -hmm. um, and those options were set forth a year ago, but they have since gone away. And we'd like to revive some of those options, the opportunity to transfer density to some of the open space over on this side of the water as opposed to that side of the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, what that would look like, I don't know. And is, is that even feasible? I really don't know, but they haven't even been discussed. So mm -hmm. what we're opposed to is the only project that's been proposed and it's not even a proposal, it's an idea, I understand that, but it's the only one that we can comment on. Mm -hmm. So our comments have been, we don't like the idea of transferring the land from a rural setting to an urban setting. We think that the growth of an urban setting is so large that it undoubtedly will have a devastating effect on the Port Gamble Bay. So um, when we talk about the partnership, we, we hope that the partnership looks at alternatives and 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 we hope to be at the table with them and we've been invited in the initial discussion before there's any details released we were at the table and then when the details were released um, we had no choice really but to oppose a project that had the opportunity to to ruin our livelihood and and ruin our culture and ruin our people's way of life so that is the only opposition we have right now. We're hoping that the alternatives are discussed with, at the county level and with Olympic Property Group. Part of the partnership is the concept of a fully contained community. And we heard that the Kitsap Regional Coordinating Council held a public hearing at the end of January to talk about updated planning policies. Loud and clear, the Port Gamble Sklalem tribe stood up and said, a fully contained community is opposed. We oppose it, oppose it, oppose it. Right. Can you explain, the con number one, the concept of a fully contained community and why it does not fit? The concept of a fully contained community is that of everyone builds a home in this city 
and they, they build up um, the opportunity to work within that city, the opportunity to shop within that city, and everyone can be in this one community where they can have everything that they need to live off of. Um, and they don't leave it. Well, that's, that's a concept that I understand. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. um, what we have concerns with is a fully contained community and a historic land or a historic town site would change the, um, the rule setting of Port Gamble into an urban setting of Port Gamble. And the opportunity for growth is, is so large when you change the, the land from rural to urban. We are very concerned with that. A fully contained community, I think, by even the research that we've done, which I've only done limited research, is difficult to have work. In, in many, many places I've tried here in Western Washington, and, and they've failed. And I'm not saying this would fail or do great. I really don't know. And I don't think anyone really knows. But I think that the concept right now is a bad idea, considering population of Kitsap County, considering the urban growth areas of Kitsap mm -hmm. County need to be relooked at. Um, we just don't think it's time, one, and we don't want to change the rural setting to an urban setting. Mm -hmm. And um, and we hope people realize that, that that is because we want to protect the environment. It's not about money for us. We're not trying to get any money out of this. If anything, we're putting a lot of resources and time and energy mm -hmm. into this to make sure that everything is protected and done right. Mm -hmm. um, so. Jeremy, tell us um, who the tribe employs. You have, um, you have legal folks. You have an ecologist, biologist. Tell us about who is employed by the tribe in this. Well, it covers lots of different areas, but you have right. many of these folks. I was going to say, we, we are a tribal government. We mm -hmm. are similar to um, many other, like a city government. Mm -hmm. um, we employ planners. We employ housing directors. We employ... Um, and employees. We employ administration, which takes care of the government aspect of it, mm -hmm. which also has natural resources, um, accounting, and, and many things like that. We have economic development. Um, we have child and family services, which helps take care of our, our tribe members and surrounding community mm -hmm. for, for many of the needs of the community, not just the Skalalem needs, but community needs in general. And we have a lot of good relationships with the state agencies to make those things happen. And, um, and I think Protecting the Bay has been a really good example of a mm -hmm. lot of those partnerships working. Mm -hmm. When you talk about a partnership, we're at the table with Ecology, exactly. Department of Natural Resources, Olympic Property Group. Mm -hmm. we're, this is a partnership that we're trying mm -hmm. to develop and, and have developed and it's been a really a good working relationship mm -hmm. at that level. Um, so the tribe employs, you know, obviously we have a casino. It's a small casino, but we're very proud of all the work that we've been mm -hmm. able to accomplish. Um, and, and we're very proud of our, our cultural resources and, and our reviving of, of a culture that has been lost for, for many years. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, those are, it kind of points out to the direction that our tribal council wants to go in. We have six voting council members. Um, of which I'm the chair, and I usually don't vote because I vote with the majority. So mm -hmm. um, it kind of leads into the direction that we want to go. Mm -hmm. um, we have our own police force. We have our own natural resources enforcement. Um, we try and do the best we can for our people mm -hmm. and the surrounding community. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So. Let's talk back about um, another as one of the aspects of the North Kitsap legacy partnership is preserving open space. Yep. Really taking care of the thousands of acres. Where is the tribe on that and how can you support that? We fully support open space. We we have a fairly small reservation as I had said. It, the reservation is, is just over a thousand acres and we have a lot of that into forested areas, open space. We have a forest management plan that's approved by the federal government. We have purchased land from the Department of Natural Resources, and all of that is within our forest management plan also. Um, 
we want to preserve the creeks, we want to preserve the um, wetlands, we want to preserve the bay, and all of that are consistent with preserving open space. And uh, I feel this tribe has done a, a really good job of preserving the land and in favor of preserving all the wetlands, the creeks, and the bay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So what steps is the tribe taking to help the discussion for alternatives for open space in Kitsap County? Where are you at? Well, specifically for the discussion of, you know, we don't want to be in the forefront of trying to tell a private landowner what they need to do with their land. Mm -hmm. um, but we certainly would, if they're, if they're willing to have us at the table, we're, we're willing to initiate the discussions with not only the landowner, but with preservation groups. And in coming up this spring, we are gonna have a, a spring event with conservation groups from around um, Western Washington that already have been involved. We've been talking to preservation groups for quite some time now. Um, and we feel like there's gonna be alternatives that we can look at. And I think they can be positive for everybody involved, including Olympic Property Group, including Kitsap County, and including the Port Gamble Skalalem Tribe mm -hmm. and the other tribes involved. So um, we also are committed to involving the broad community with community events throughout the spring and summer to get everyone involved and let everyone have a voice in this. We also have a website called portgamblebay.com um, of which we're gonna share letters, we're gonna um, have announcements, we're gonna talk about um, the reasons why Port Gamble's Kalalam wants to preserve the bay and the opportunity that is there. Say and that website one more time, please. Portgamblebay.com. Excellent. Um, people can probably get involved in helping preserve the bay through that website, do you think? Absolutely. If folks in the community are interested in this. Excellent. Absolutely. Good. Well, wow, we've covered a lot in our short 28 or 29 minutes. Jeremy, thank you for your time and your leadership and um, best wishes on this, this project. I think we should get a little input from some other folks as the county um, considers this project and considers the planning, the planning principles that are uh, being changed this go round. Thank you for joining us on Conversation With and thanks again to Jeremy for hosting us and inviting us to his government center here on the Tribal Reservation. And we'll see you next time on Conversation With.